Anticoagulants are used to treat and prevent blood clots that may occur in your blood vessels, whether it be an artery or a vein. Blood supply and oxygen supply are reduced by the result of a blocked artery, which leads to a stroke or heart attack and eventually death. When we talk about oral anticoagulants, the first drug that comes into mind is warfarin. Discovered in the 1920s, warfarin was originally used in order to treat internal bleeding in cattle and sheep. Warfarin has its advantages and disadvantages, but also limitations to its use, and must be consumed safely in order to reduce its side effects. Warfarin has several clotting factors, and each of the clotting factors has different half-lives. In the new era, food bioavailability and pharmacokinetics in drug interactions are suitable for daily dosing. Recently, there are new oral anticoagulants that has been recently approved by the Australian Therapeutic Goods Administration, TGA. Rivaroxaban and dabigotran atixolate are new oral anticoagulants that are available and should be simpler to use than heparin or warfarin. These new oral anticoagulants may lead us to better and safety health measures. Rivaroxaban or Zorote directly inhibits factor 10A by interfering the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways of the coagulation cascade. It is the first oral anticoagulant to specifically target factor 10A for a number of reasons. Factor 10A occupies the crossroads between intrinsic and intrinsic pathway of the process of coagulation and is accountable for converting prothrombin factor 2 to thrombin factor 2A. Rivaroxaban inhibits free prothrombinase associated and clot associated factor 10A without affecting platelet aggregation. Another recently approved oral anticoagulant by TGA, dabigotran etoxalate, is a project with a low molecular weight, which after oral absorption it converts into its active form called dabigotran or pradaxa in the liver by esterase catalyzed hydrolysis. It is a direct thrombin inhibitor, which means that the drug prevents the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin and prevents thrombus formation. So let's compare warfarin and the new anticoagulant drugs by looking at its advantages and disadvantages. Advantages. Warfarin prevents arterial and venous thrombosis, which helps reduce strokes and heart attacks. Since it is the most widely used anticoagulant in the world, there is plenty of experience in its clinical use. It can be readily reversible with fresh frozen plasma and vitamin K, and patients only need daily doses of warfarin. Disadvantages. Routine monitoring and regular blood tests are required to maintain the international normalized ratio in order to keep within therapeutic range. Warfarin interacts with other medications along with alcohol and certain foods, especially those that contain high vitamin K. A narrow therapeutic window and delayed onset and offset of action. There is a major risk of bleeding which can cause significant morbidity and mortality. Should be avoided during pregnancy as there is a risk of fetal bleeding remains throughout pregnancy due to immature fetal liver. The risk for death rate after trauma is significantly high in patients using warfarin and development of dependence for the drug. New oral anticoagulants advantages include there is a rapid onset and offset of action, a wide therapeutic window, they lower the risk of intracranial bleeding and incidence of major bleeding, there is no need for regular coagulation monitoring, low drug to drug interaction and low potential for foods so there is no dietary restrictions. Disadvantages of new oral anticoagulants are they are not reversible agents. Since it's still relatively new, there is long-term safety than warfarin. There is lack of antidotes which can be used in emergencies such as a hemorrhage or overdose of the drug. Women who are breastfeeding should not be prescribed with new oral anticoagulants. There is a short half-life of two to three hours and same dosage must be consumed twice a day. Warfarin has its limitations, which includes its slow onset of action. It must be overlapped with heparin and its activity must be monitored as its dosing is variable due to its activity being influenced by vitamin K and genetic polymorphisms in enzymes that are involved in its metabolism and drug-to-drug -drug interaction that promote or reduce its activity. Although new anticoagulants build on a better understanding on coagulation pathways, there is also potential limitations, including uncertainty regarding assessment of drug levels, no specific reversal agent as its half-life is much shorter than warfarin, which is a problem in case of very high drug levels. Safe drug levels for major surgery, so a hematologist or other expertise should be consulted before surgery. There are multiple dose regimens, as there isn't a uniform dose regimen, and some patients must have difficulty keeping the twice daily dosing schedules and the impact of a missed dose may have serious problems. It can be concluded that new oral anticoagulants are better to a certain degree in terms of routine monitoring. New oral anticoagulants must be used carefully with patients who have renal impairment and there is less bleeding risk if patients consume new oral anticoagulants when compared to warfarin which has a higher rate of internal bleeding.